Good evening, everybody. Um, thank you very much for coming. Um, I have a, a really, really good talk planned tonight. It's the hidden dangers in your home. And when I started doing the research for this, it was a little bit overwhelming. So now I'm going to have part two. So part one is just mostly dealing with body care, things that you put on your body. Part two is going to be more things in your home, things that you need to know about. And it's actually quite scary. A lot of us, we, we think we're doing great changing to organic and, and getting filtered water, which we are, but we're also getting a ton of toxins from just things that we put on our bodies. So, what is the largest organ of the body? Skin. The skin, that's right. Everybody knows that one. So, it's also one of the least understood organs of the body. We have estheticians that are fantastic, but they look at the skin just from the surface. And um, one of the things that we need to start looking at is the skin and nourishing it from from within because that's actually where the skin gets most of its nourishment from is from from what you put in your body and from the blood and so you want to make sure you have clean blood drink lots of water get hydrated and then whatever you put on your skin you want to make sure that that's clean and pure um, the skin is a major organ of elimination so we've got the, the intestines, the colon, you have the lungs, um, you have the kidneys, and the skin. The skin is another um, organ of elimination. And we eliminate through um, perspiration, um, acne. If you get a rash, your, your body's trying to push things out. So it excretes waste, but it's also an organ of elimination or an organ of, of absorption um, but the skin also is indicative of what's going on inside your body so if you want to maintain good healthy skin you need to maintain good healthy organs um, so the skin what it does is protects us from the outside environment and keeps all everything inside and protects you um, it regulates our body temperature and does that mostly by perspiration um, but it also provides synthesis for vitamin D and so when you go out in the Sun you want to make sure that you don't have sunscreen on because that blocks the vitamin D synthesis um, so you want to be very very careful about what you put on your skin so um, we're going to talk about a lot of cosmetics, shampoo, hair care, um, but one of the things that I thought was astounding was that women absorb two kilograms of chemicals through the toiletries and the products that they put on their skin. Two kilograms of chemicals every year. That, that's, that's astounding. Um, and we're always putting on lotion. We go to the, the um, beauty care section and they have the sample of the lotion and we just put the lotion on and it smells so good. Um, and you think you're moisturizing your skin and you're doing something good. Um, in reality, you're really causing a lot of damage to your whole body, not just your skin. Anything that you put on your skin is d absorbed directly into the bloodstream. When you eat, you eat whatever it is. If it's if it's um, toxic, for example, you consume too much alcohol, whatever, it goes through the, your liver, and your liver processes everything, and it helps to detoxify your system. But when you put something on your skin, it goes directly into your bloodstream, and you don't even have that protection that that the liver provides. So we're going to talk a little bit about shampoo. Sham most shampoos out there are formulated with sodium lauryl sulfate and it's SLS for short and what it is it's a foaming agent and we are conditioned to believe that 
soap isn't doing its job unless it's nice and lathered and foamy and you've got nice all these bubbles and that's kind of what we're conditioned to believe and the reason that soap foams up is because of the SLS and this chemical is very very dangerous what it does it cuts through the oils of your skin cuts through the oils in your scalp and it denatures the skin proteins and your body produces oils naturally your, your skin excretes oils naturally and that's a protective barrier it's there for your protection and when you use soap or shampoo that has SLS in it it cuts through that and leaves your skin very very vulnerable it's vulnerable to irritations um, it allows environmental contaminants to get in and um, it denatures the protein which means that it breaks down that that protein in your skin so it actually has the effect of aging your skin um, and then once the SLS is absorbed into your skin it mimics an estrogen and so then it disrupts your whole hormonal balance and so that's what I'm saying when when you use these products that contain these ingredients it affects your whole body it's not just your skin so sodium lauryl sulfate let's talk about that one that is one of the most widely used poisons along with sodium laureth sulfate and when you start looking at ingredients on on shampoo bottles soap bottles detergent bottles you're going to see a lot of different names that all look kind of similar um, sometimes they'll have the abbreviation SLS SLES um, but these are commonly used in almost every every shampoo product out there um, as far as like the the main the main products um, it's also used in detergents it's used in toothpaste so you need to be aware of what you put in your mouth um, and again it is something that foams up and therefore we think we're getting cleaner and it's doing its job and you ever hear that expression squeaky clean that's because you're, you're stripping your skin of the oils that your your body needs and so yeah you are squeaky clean but it's not a good thing it's a really bad thing um, so there's these chemicals are known by over 150 names that's why it's really hard to be listing what all these chemicals are but 150 names and they're commonly contaminated with dioxane and that is a known carcinogen and that's something that you definitely don't want consuming um, and like I said earlier they can't be metabolized um, by the liver because it goes directly into the bloodstream so let's go over some of the dangers um, skin irritation and skin corrosion that's a lovely one isn't it skin corrosion um, eye irritation um, eye deformities in children protein denaturing that's carcinogenic and when it enters the body it maintains residual levels in the heart the liver um, the lungs and the brain so the stuff stays with you it just doesn't leave so that's why we'll get to the end different things that you can do to help detoxify yourself um, the next item I want to talk about is conditioner and that's another one people want to have their hair all nice and soft and shiny um, first they strip it and then they want to have soft shiny hair uses the same chemicals as in shampoos the SLS which is an engine degreaser the, these chemicals all have commercial uses and the SLS is an engine degreaser it's a really a powerful substance and it does a really great job um, in um, in auto mechanic places you know they, they use it as a degreaser um, they contain formaldehyde which everybody knows that's an embalming fluid um, was it's also a known carcinogen and um, propylene glycol which is used in antifreeze 
and the reason they use the the formaldehyde is it's a preservative and it does a great job. Um, they want these products to have a really long shelf life. So they use the formaldehyde for a preservative and the, the antifreeze, the propylene glycol, what that does is that helps whatever pro other ingredients are in there to penetrate deeper. So when you're putting this on your, your hair, your body, anywhere, it's penetrating deeper because of the propylene glycol. So that means all the other chemicals that are going along with it are being penetrated deeper into the skin. Okay, formaldehyde. Formaldehyde, the FDA issued a statement in 2006 which stated that when formaldehyde makes up 0.2% of a cosmetic product applied to the skin, it's safe for the majority of the people. This is something that they know is a known carcinogen. They know that, and they're saying that there's a safe level. But the thing is, we use these products every single day, and you use it in your, your soap when you wash your hands multiple times a day, when you shampoo your hair, when you condition your hair, when you wash your dishes, when, when you do all these numerous things all day long, you're having this cumulative effect. And they're saying that this 0.2%, well, it's safe for a majority of the people. The formaldehyde is also used in nail polish and the, the nail hardeners. And so um, it, it's, it's an actual ingredient to harden the nails. That's, that's the reason that they put it in there. Um, it's also listed in California's Prop 65, um, which I'm going to talk about a little bit later. But Californians got sick and tired of having so many chemicals in, in our products that we came up with Prop 65. And there's over 800 items listed on there. And California has determined that formaldehyde exposure from the nail salons and elsewhere is so low that no warnings are required under Prop 65. So they've just decided, even though they know it's a carcinogen and it's in all of these products and everyone's being exposed to it, well, the levels are that low, so it's exempt from um, having a warning. If you notice, sometimes when you go to a store and you'll see on crystal, um, it'll say that there's lead in the crystal. Um, it has a little sticker on it. Or you go sometimes to um, a restaurant with a bar and they'll have a, a sign there that says alcohol can cause birth defects. That's because of Prop 65. Well, nail salons, because they use the formaldehyde, should be having that, that notice there, but um, it's been determined that it's safe there, so we don't have to have it. However, the EPA, which is another governmental agency, is saying that it's a probable human carcinogen. So we have two different agencies that are kind of saying polar opposites. One saying it's safe and we don't need to have a warning, and the other saying, uh-uh, this is a carcinogen. So you're going to find that a lot with the different governmental agencies, that you've got the EPA saying one thing and the FDA saying, saying something else, and then the USDA saying something else, and, you know, it's like, who, who are you supposed to believe? Not the government. Okay, baby shampoo. I even have a little bottle of baby shampoo. Um, no more tears, gentle to eyes, as pure as water. I mean, how many of us have put this on our children? And how many of us have purchased this because we think it's safe and it's gentle as water? Um, it's, it's not. This, this product, even though it says that it's gentle, it contains dioxane, which is a carcinogen, and it contains formaldehyde. And the reason it's gentle um, is because they put chemicals in it so that the baby's eyes don't sting. But it's just another chemical that they've added on to kind of soften the harsh effects of the original chemicals. 
So it doesn't mean that it's gentle in the way we would think it's gentle, that, oh, it's safe and it's good for you. They're saying it's gentle because it doesn't sting the baby's eyes without telling you about the other chemicals they put into it. So um, there's environmental groups out there that are, are really doing some good work, and I'm going to give you a website later on um, exposing this kind of um, fallacy out there. And so they've been harping on Johnson & Johnson. Now Johnson & Johnson are planning to remove all harsh chemicals and carcinogens from their baby shampoos within two and a half years. Well that sounds great. However, in Europe they already have a formula that doesn't have these harsh chemicals in it. And what they're saying is, well, we can't do it right away because we have to test every single chemical. So if we're taking out one chemical, we have to put in something else and we have to test that before it's going to be safe and we can't put that on the market yet. Which is ridiculous because this product is toxic to you and to your baby. <coughs> okay, toothpaste. Again, what do they use? The SLS, the engine degreaser. Um, they use other harsh chemicals and then they added fluoride to it. Now everybody knows in the, the industry that fluoride is a neurotoxin. Um, if you look on your tube of toothpaste, your Crest or Colgate, there's a warning, don't swallow. If you swallow, call poison control. I mean, this is ridiculous. This is something that you're putting in your mouth or in your baby's mouth and you know, you're, you're consuming part of it and you have to have a warning for poison control? That's absolutely ridiculous. So, um, the SLS, what it does, it attacks the mucous membrane and it alters the, the structure. Remember I talked about it, denatures the protein. Well, that makes everything else in there more easily penetrating into the skin. And it can lead to the gastrointestinal distress in the form of vomiting and diarrhea. So sodium fluoride, that's one of the, the main ingredients in rat poison and cockroach poison. And this is the stuff that we're putting into our mouths and that we're giving our children so they could have healthy teeth. It's this propaganda that is, they're, they're selling us a bill of goods here and they're poisoning us. We can use the toothpaste to kill the bugs outside. Them. Exactly, use the toothpaste for, to kill the bugs. <laughs> That's a, that's a really good use for it. Kill the bugs outside with it. <laughs> I never thought about that one. Um, they, they've used fluoride to alter behavior and mood and it causes nausea and vomiting and gastric pain and diarrhea. And they've done experiments giving fluoride to people in prison to calm them down and dumb them down. And there's there's a fantastic book out there called The Fluoride Deception, and it talks about the whole history of fluoride and how it came to be that it's in, in our products. Now, large doses of fluoride, um, they can cause paralysis, they can cause muscular weakness, convulsions, um, and respiratory and cardiac failure. And Interestingly, it's never been approved by the FDA. And here we think it is. We kind of accept fluoride in our water and our toothpaste and mouthwashes just as, you know, the way it is. It's never been approved by the FDA. And it's been linked to dental deformity, um, arthritis, allergic reactions, stuff like that. Okay, so toothpaste. Toothpaste is, is has so many things in it. Um, it's got the blue dye number one and two. And this is another one that can trigger behavioral problems, um, health problems, allergies, asthma, um, nervousness, lack of concentration, cancer. I mean the list just keeps going on and on and on. And the blue dye, it's synthesized from petroleum. Which, who wants to be consuming petroleum? 
Another ingredient that they put in toothpaste is, oops, is triclosan. And that is registered as a dangerous pesticide by the EPA. Um, and it's used for its antibacterial properties. And it's found in detergents as well. Um, and what it does, it temporarily deactiv deactivates the sensory um, nerve endings and um, it can lead to a whole host of, of problems. Um, another danger is the hydrated silica, which is um, something that's used for tooth whitening. And what it does is it scrubs off the enamel. So it scrubs off any staining or anything that you might have, but as it scrubs off the enamel, it, it causes damage to the enamel. And um, you're, you're causing just way, way too much damage. The teeth, again, need to be nourished from the inside. The teeth are living tissues. Um, even though they're hard and we don't think of them as living tissue, they are living tissue. That's why you have your, um, the, the root in there and that's why you get like a toothache because it's alive in there. So we need to nourish it from, from the inside. Now another thing is glycerin. And glycerin is in almost all toothpaste and it's in even most natural toothpaste. And what it does is it, it's a coating on your teeth and it kind of gives your teeth that slick feeling that you feel like, oh, my teeth are nice and clean. Um, but what happens is that coating um, prevents mineralization. So it prevents the building up of your, your, your tooth enamel. And in the long run, it makes you susceptible to, to cavities. Um, so when I chew the toothpaste, I look for one that, of course, doesn't have fluoride and all those chemicals, but I also look for one that doesn't have glycerin. And it's really, really difficult to find. Um, the other thing I noticed with the toothpaste, without the glycerin, is in the beginning, the first, like, week or so of using it, my teeth didn't feel as clean. And that's because that coating of the glycerin is coming off. And you want that coating of the glycerin to come off. But I was at Mother's Market last week and I was so excited. I found a toothpaste. I'm going to pass around this box and it's called Earth Paste. And um, it's a natural toothpaste and it doesn't have glycerin. And so I'm going to pass this around, see if you guys are, are interested um, in, in looking at it. It's very few ingredients. You can pronounce all the names. And it even says on the box, you can eat it. So you don't have to spit it out. You could swallow it. Um, but that to me is, is a really, really big deal. I want to be able, if I'm going to be brushing my teeth with something, I want to be able to eat it. Um, and it uses, um, it uses clay in there, which is actually really good for, for your body, even if you consume it. What was that? Oh, the, you'll, you'll see the box. It'll be passed around. What about baking soda? Um, baking soda is good. But now we're going to talk about antiperspirants. And baking soda is good for antiperspirant as well. So deodorant and antiperspirant. Um, the aluminum that they put into the antiperspirant, what it does is it blocks the sweat gland. Now, if you're gonna be blocking a sweat gland, one of the worst sweat glands to block is right here, because it's right next to the breast tissue, which you don't want any of this, these glands, anything blocked, because it makes you more susceptible to things like breast cancer and fibroids and tumors and things like that. So it's really important to not have any aluminum in what you're putting on under your arms. Um, aluminum also is a neurotoxin. And especially if you're a woman and you shave your armpit, you're gonna have little micro tears and then you're putting on your antiperspirant and it's going to go, the aluminum goes straight, you know, into your bloodstream and it's a neurotoxin, it's going to affect your brain. So you want to be really careful about what you put on under your arms, especially if you're going to be shaving. So 
alternatives, safe alternatives, um, essential oils. There's um, different brands out there that you can buy um, that have essential oils in them. There's a couple of brands that, um, if you're interested, I, I can get them to you. I don't have the names of them right now, but um, they don't have any of the, the toxins in it. They're all natural ingredients. Um, and you want to make sure that it's ingredients that you can pronounce. That's like one of the, the big things here. Okay, sunscreens. Sunscreens are horrible, horrible, horrible. Um, the sunscreens that have been out on the market for the last 30 years have been really, really poor quality. Um, there's UVA and UVB, and what happened is um, they put poor quality sunscreens out on the market, number one, that's bad in itself. Um, but it gave people a false sense of safety where um, they would put the sunscreen on, they'd put it on SPF you know, 30 or something really strong, they'd stay out in the sun way too long, and it wouldn't block the rays that um, would cause the free radical damage. You know, it might prevent the burning, and so you feel, okay, good, I was protected, I didn't get burned, but it was still doing damage to the skin. And um, in addition to, to that, they put a lot of toxic chemicals in, um, in the sunscreens. And I mean, there's just too many, too many to list. But um, the other thing is when you put sunscreen on and you go out into the ocean, um, the, the sunscreen washes off into the ocean and it's toxic for the sea life. And um, they, they believe that like the coral reefs, a lot of them are, are dying off. And one of the factors in that is that, you know, you have these divers and you have different people going there with sunscreen and it's being washed off and it's clogging up, you know, all the pores where, where the coral life can't breathe anymore. So um, that's, that's one of the contributing factors to that. That's not the only thing, but that, that is one of the contributing factors. So again, we need to protect our skin from the inside out. And um, I've said this before, but um, what I use, I use coconut oil. I just got back from Hawaii. I'm not very tanned, but I'm not burned. Um, and what I do is I take astaxanthin, which is an antioxidant, and I take MSM, um, which acts to absorb the radiation from the sun, um, and then I put coconut oil on. And I've done this, it's been my experiment to do this and see you know, what happens to, to my skin. And being so fair and not getting burned when I'm, you know, out in the sun all day in Hawaii, it's, it's amazing to me. So the other thing is when you're treating your skin from the inside out, you really want to make sure that you don't consume bad fats, which means rancid cooked fats, because that affects your skin and that also makes it very easy for you to burn. You have rancid fat that's all through your system and it makes it easy for you to burn. So make sure that you consume the good raw fat, but use coconut oil or something like that on your skin um, and then consume a lot of the antioxidants and, and then just be wise. Um, you know, you don't wanna sit out there um, and fry all day long. Um, but at the same time, you don't have to be so scared that you have to be covered up in long sleeves and everything. Um, and you do want the benefit of the, the vitamin D. So what happens is when you're out in the sun, um, the, the sunlight hits your skin and through the, the um, the cholesterol in your body the, the, and the skin synthesizes the sunlight into vitamin D. And so that's a really good source of vitamin D if you don't want to go and buy vitamin D. Um, 
but it's really important to make sure that you get your daily vitamin D, but you can't do that if you have sunscreen on. Okay, perfume and cologne. Now, this one is like really, really offensive to me. The law specifically exempts manufacturers from the requirement of disclosing what's in their fragrance. So you will see a little line on the ingredient list that says fragrance. And it could be hundreds of chemicals in there. And you don't know what they are, but hundreds of chemicals that make up that fragrance. And these chemicals, they range from being carcinogenic to hormone disrupting. Um, any synthetic type of fragrance is gonna have a whole host of, of chemicals in it and none of them are gonna be beneficial for you. All of them are gonna be bad. So you wanna really be careful what shampoos you buy, what soaps you buy, conditioner, whatever it is, because what do we do as women? We open up the bottle, we smell it, oh, this smells good, let me, let me go home, you know, let me use this, let me buy it. Um, and it's toxic to you. And what I think is the, the most disturbing about this is companies like Estee Lauder that have that really pink ribbon, you know, that say support us and buy our product for breast cancer because we support cancer research. Their products are promoting breast cancer and their products are promoting all sorts of cancer. I mean, how hypocritical is that? And, and most people don't realize what's going on and they're spending their money on this and they're actually causing the cancer. So that, that one's really offensive to me. Okay, makeup. I hate to tell you ladies, makeup, you gotta be really careful with this one. There's over 10,500 ingredients found in skincare and makeup and hair care and body care. 89% um, of these products haven't been tested. That's huge. Um, and then they haven't tested the combination of the two. Because do you remember back in elementary school when you had that experiment where you had the vinegar and the baking soda and it foamed up and it was like really cool. You could make volcanoes and stuff. Well, that's because the chemical reaction between two, two seemingly inert products. Well, here we've got chemicals that God knows what's in them. You know, they're used for rat poison, they're used for engine degreasers, and we're combining it with other chemicals and nobody's testing the, the combination of those. They're not even testing the one chemical by itself, let alone the combination. So the FDA doesn't regulate these products, nor does the FDA regulate the labeling of the products. So you have to be, you have to know, you have to really know this stuff. And if you want truly organic skincare or body products, you have to look for the USDA label, which I'm gonna to get to in a little bit about that. Um, but lipsticks, lipsticks, many of them contain lead. So, and what do we do? We put our lipstick on, we get nervous, we bite our lips, we lick our lips, we're consuming the lead and whatever other dyes and chemicals are in there. Mascara, arsenic, cadmium, lead, and nickel. Um, and these heavy metals and these chemicals, they don't have to be labeled and they're not labeled um, because they're not ingredients. They're impurities. We can have impurities. We're, we're allowed impurities. But lead, okay, some of the, the problems with lead. It damages the brain and the nervous system. Um, it causes behavior. And my iPad's gonna abandon me. Um, causes um, behavior problems, um, slowed growth, hearing problems, cadmium. It's toxic. Um, it's used in paints and batteries and phosphate fertilizers. Arsenic causes headaches and confusion and diarrhea and drowsiness. Um, nickel um, 
you have a higher chance of developing lung, nose, larynx, prostate cancer, respiratory failure, a whole host of problems. Um, moisturizers, um, they contain the propylene glycol, which I explained to you earlier, helps the chemicals penetrate deeper into the skin, um, so it makes your skin much more supple. Also makes more chemicals absorbed into your bloodstream. Um, nail polish and nail polish removal, um, these are formulated with formaldehyde and other dangerous chemicals. Um, and so an alternative is um, you can use go to Mother's Market or Whole Foods and buy products that have um, formaldehyde free or you can just buff your nails and you don't need to have them painted. Um, Okay, organic skin care. Organic skin care, this is something that is not regulated by the FDA. Um, the FDA regulates only food and drugs. And so there was a fight between the FDA and um, the USDA, who's gonna regulate skin care and all these products. And it turned out that the USDA was going to. But the problem is that you can't be guaranteed that your product is organic unless one you read the ingredients and the ingredients tell you it's organic or it's got this label you've got to look for that label because it's not regulated um, you can go to Whole Foods or Mothers and it can say um, you know herbal or natural or organic and um, it doesn't have to have those organic ingredients in it. It's not necessarily something that's good for you. So you want to look for that USDA label. Because um, if it's not there, there's problems. Okay, tattoos. Tattoos are, I'm sorry, tattoos are, are you have to be very careful getting tattoos. You can get vegan ink. Um, and you can get safe inks. But the the when you get a tattoo, you're supposed to sign a disclosure saying from Prop, Prop 65 that you know that, the, that there's um, problems with it, that it can, it can contain some of the um, items that are listed on the, the Prop 65 list. So the inks can contain mercury, cadmium, other heavy metals, formaldehyde, um, and plastic-based inks. And what happens is the skin will react and it'll encapsulate the, um, the foreign material, the ink, and um, the nearby lymph nodes will try and absorb what's going on there. If you have tattoos, it's probably not a good idea to get them removed because um, the heat will react with the, the inks that are in there and that can cause actually more damage. Um, Prop 65, so in 1986, California voters said, we've had enough, we wanna know what's, what's in our, our products. So they came up with um, the, the Prop 65. There's over 800 chemicals on the list. There's a process that um, you have to go through in order you know, to get other chemicals listed on that list. But right now there's over 800 and they are, the, to get on that list, it has to cause birth defects or be carcinogenic or other reproductive harms. Um, and the kind of like escape clause is if, if it's below a certain level, then it doesn't have to be, um, people don't have to disclose it. For example, on a shampoo bottle, does if, if these items are listed, this bottle wouldn't have to have a Prop 65 label because it's the level is too low. However, the cosmetic industry, they were able to get an exemption if the product complied with the state and federal um, administrative standards. Okay, another few little random things for your body. This isn't really around your home, but cash register receipts, a lot of them have BPA on it, which is the, the um, the plastic, which is hormone disrupting, um, endocrine disruptor. So um, if people ask me if I want a receipt, I just don't even take a receipt anymore. Um, hand sanitizers, 
What those do is they strip the mantle of the skin and they contain the um, triclosan, which I talked about a little bit earlier, which um, can even affect your, your cardiac muscle, can affect your heart. So stay away from the hand sanitizers. Um, and medications can contain thimerosal. And when I read this, I was really upset and I thought, how can that be? Thimerosal, that's like mercury, that's heavy metal. And so what I did, I went, I had some old eardrops um, and I looked at the ingredients and there was thimerosal in there. And I mean, think about it, you're putting an eardrop in your ear to clear up a, a ear infection and that's going in your head and that that tissue is very tender and it's going to absorb all of that and it's going to go right to your to your brain it's mercury so check your check your your prescriptions you know things like that because they'll put that on there Thimer thimerosal is a great preservative and that's why they use it they just don't tell you it's a toxic heavy metal at the same time. Um, okay, so a couple other dangers is water. Use a filter or become a filter. So you want to make sure that you use a shower filter. It's really important. When you have hot water, um, the hot water kind of vaporizes the chlorine in there and you're inhaling a lot of chlorine, um, which adversely affects your your respiratory system and it irritates the skin it dries out your skin um, it's associated with malignant melanoma um, it accelerates aging and nobody wants to age faster than they already are so um, make sure you use a water filter and next week we're talking about water oh next week we're talking about water um, that'll be a Water has chlorine in it and fluoride in it. But if it's got chlorine in it, it's, it's hot water, there's steam coming out, so I gotta breathe in that in as well. That's right, that's right. So that's why it's really important to use a water filter so it takes the chlorine out. Um, now, I told you a lot of like really bad stuff, um, but there's good news and there's things that you can do. Number one, detoxify your body. That's like what I'm all about, detoxifying your body, making sure your organs of elimination are working properly. You want your liver to be working properly so it can detoxify the, the toxins that you consume. You want your, um, your, your kidneys, your bladder, your lungs, you want everything to be working properly. Um, the, the best way is to make sure that your digestion is working. If your digestion isn't working, you're not detoxifying the other organs of your body either. Drink plenty of fresh water. I now am a water snob and I go and I get my water at Carlsbad Springs. Um, it comes straight from the ground. Um, it's alkaline and um, it doesn't have any chemicals. It's not been treated. So, um, Start exploring different options, and we'll talk about that one next week, about the different options for water. Consume only organic products. Even, even if it's um, body care products, go organic. If it's you know, foods that you consume, go organic. It's either pay now or pay later. And I'd rather pay a little bit extra now for the good quality than paying later with my health. So go organic. Um, use the organic products on your skin. A far infrared sauna, if you can, is really good because that heats your body from the inside, pushes the toxins up out of the skin. And so that is an excellent way to detoxify your skin. Dry skin brushing, I brought a dry skin brush. Um, get the long handled one, you just go up um, your extremities. You can do your back with a long handle one. You go towards your heart. Um, and these are really inexpensive. I think they're like under $15. Um, get a shower filter. Get 20 minutes of sunshine and you want it in the peak of the day because um, that's when you're going to be able to get the, the right amount of sunshine so that your skin can convert 
um, the sunshine to the vitamin D. But do it without sunscreen or you're defeating the whole purpose of going out there in the sun. Exercise daily. You got to do something. Keep your lymph flowing because that's another big way of, of detoxifying is your lymph system. And your lymph system is activated by your diaphragm um, through the heavy breathing or deep breathing. Um, so you can do deep breathing exercises. You can walk. So the lymph system is also activated by the walking. And you can kill like three or four birds with one stone. Get grounded. Walk barefoot on sand, grass, whatever. So you get your exercise, you get your grounding, you get your sunshine, you get them all at the same time. Um, and then again, make sure all your organs of elimination are supported and you're getting the proper nutrients. Um, and then support the local manufacturers of quality products. You can go to the different farmers markets and you can talk to them. They have body care products there. And they make body care products out of, of like raw goat's milk or honey. Um, just an assortment of, of different things that are actually good for your skin. And then vote with your dollars. If we all start buying the organic that sends a message to the, the manufacturer and they've done studies that if it's just like 5%, which you know sometimes you get defeated thinking, well, how, how is it going to matter what I spend my money on? But if it's only 5% that makes that difference, then your dollars do matter and your, do, your dollars do count. So be wise with how you spend your money. And then support organizations like this one. It's www dot ewg dot org and this is a fantastic fantastic resource you can go on to this website and you can look and say okay what do I want to buy as far as beauty care what do I want as far as household items and it will rank items and it'll tell you if this is a safe item, if this is an unsafe item. So this is a fantastic, fantastic website. And then get a nutritional and enzyme analysis because you want to support your body. Your body has to all be working um, together. It's, it's a, a finely tuned machine where each part of it works together. And you got to make sure that everything is receiving the nutrients that, that it needs. Each body part you know, requires different nutrients. So you want to make sure that the foods that you're consuming are actually doing your body good and you're not just eliminating them. So it's really important to get the, the proper enzymes and the proper um, dietary nutrition. And then last of all, if you can't eat it, don't put it on your body. I mean, that's like a big cardinal rule. If you can't eat it, if you look at, at something and it's not something that you would be able to eat, don't put it on your body. There's fantastic um, moisturizers that they combine um, the, the shea butter and the cocoa butter and the coconut oil and they'll put essential oils in it so it smells nice and fresh and pretty and so you can get all the things that you would want from a, a conventional type product in a good product that's good for you and you can feel good using it. So thank you very much. <laughs>